processes and tools dominate today's Agile discussions, but we are devoted to the individuals and interactions that make it work. From the beginner to the veteran practitioner, we have something for you. Welcome to Agile for Humans. All right, we are back, coming to you live from The Ohio State University at The Path to Agility Conference. Joining me now, Jeremy Willits. Jeremy, how you doing? I was actually hoping you were going to call me The Jeremy Willits. The Jeremy <laughs> Willits, because we're at The Ohio State University? <laughs> yeah, at The Path to Agility. At The Path to That's right. Next time, I will call you The. <laughs> Jeremy is a good friend, meet up at a lot of conferences, so I'm very excited for you, actually, because this is your first time speaking at a conference. It is, Ryan, I, and it's it's been kind of a, a kind of a whirlwind journey. I decided at the beginning of the year that one of the things I wanted to do this year was to to create and submit a conference talk, and I got accepted to the Path to Agility. I thanks to Koha and the organizers of this great conference. I've been coming here for a couple of years now, and and I gave my presentation this morning and had a great time. Um, all the feedback I got from the audience was smiles and laughter, and not at the content of the talk, but at the actual exercise we did. So good. I thought it was positive. No, it's exciting. I like it when. Uh when uh, people take that plunge, they get up on the stage and give it a shot. I think there's uh, something special about that, putting together the material, getting the feedback, you know, throwing yourself out there, being vulnerable and, and taking a risk. So I, I, congratulations. Thank it's you. It's really great that you did it. What was your talk about? What were you, unfortunately, I had some other obligations and had to bounce around, but I uh, have heard good things and you got a lot of laughter and a lot of good uh, uh, in the right spots, which is always nice. Yes. When the jokes hit, that's <laughs> always a pleasant feeling when you're giving a talk. So, uh, but sometimes it's hit or miss, but uh, it sounds like you hit all your spots, the jokes fell on a good audience and uh, it went well. Uh, what were you speaking about and what was your message? I was talking about um, introspection and about how that introspection at the personal level or at the group level can help um, fuel the fire of continuous learning, which I think is is a component of agile and a component of existing in the IT world that is really important. If you're not if you're not continuously learning and continuously getting new things into your brain, I think Ellen talked about it a little bit today in her keynote. If you're not continually learning new things, you're doomed to fail and you're doomed to to stagnate a little bit. And so my talk was um, it was pretty short. I, I dealt a little bit with my own personal learning journey and tried to use that as hopefully a reference point for some people in the audience. Um, and then I talked about introspection and how that correlates to self-directed learning, which I think through that you can identify some continuous learning opportunities. And I think just that whole umbrella of continuous improvement. So introspection, interesting skill to try to teach. Yes. So how do we, how do we look inside, maybe look internal, be honest, be reflective and, and go forward. So what are some of the exercises or what are some of the tips that you give to help people uh, look inward and, and to do so in a meaningful way? The exercise we did today was it's a Jurgen Apollo exercise called personal maps. And, and he, he posits it as a way to, to get to know your teammates better. But the first step of the exercise is for you to write down some details of yourself. And so you, you create this kind of model and you, as you work Clockwise, you, you sort of divulge deeper information about yourself. So you start with things like where you live, your education, your work, you know, stuff you would, you would when you introduce yourself to somebody at a conference, let's say, and they're a new person in your life, you would say, hi, I'm so-and-so. I went to um, so-and-so college, maybe the Ohio State University. But then as you work your way around this model, you, you, you get to things like goals and values. And so those are two of the things we talked about today in my presentation, getting people to fill out that personal map and think a little bit about goals and values. And, and multiple people said this as we were going around the room talking about the exercise itself. Multiple people said that you rarely sit down and think about your goals and values. Some of the attendees found that, that sitting down and, and actively taking the time out to think about those things was an, an introspection opportunity that they did not expect, but that they found helpful. It's often amazing how if you're just intentional about things that uh, your outcomes can change and goal setting is certainly one of those practices and it's neat to see how that plays out. So overall though, what'd you think of your first speaking experience? Did you enjoy it? I loved it. I'm, Are you going to do it again? I'm going to do it again. You're going to do it again. The, the challenge is going to be for me um, to figure out something else to talk about. I, I, I think I would like to give a, a similar presentation, but maybe build on it somehow. So sure. I, it's, so it, it's, I, I'm leaving here and I'm not, uh, feeling invigorated but feeling invigorated not only in the fact that I feel like I've succeeded in delivering my first conference presentation, but invigorated in so much as that the future is open for new possibilities and new new conference talks. 
Well, and once you get one in, you start building a, a resume, you start building a, a history of speaking, and that, I think that's great. So I hope you continue down that, down that path. All right, we're going to take a quick break. When we get back, more with Jeremy Willits. Agile Dev East is the premier industry event covering the latest techniques and topics in the Agile universe. Learn both foundational knowledge and new methodologies to develop skills, supercharge knowledge, and re-energize your career growth. This year's event will take place November 13th through the 18th in Orlando, Florida. As an added bonus, the event is co-located with Better Software and DevOps East conferences. Your one registration automatically gives you access to all three programs. This means you can choose from over 100 learning and networking opportunities to build a customized week of learning that fits you and your organization's specific needs. Explore the program at adceast.techwell.com. Agile for Humans listeners use code AFH16 to receive $200 off their conference registration fees. Register by the September 16th super early bird deadline for combined savings of up to $600 off at adceast.techwell.com. You're in one of those interesting spots where you're an agile coach, I but am. you're an internal agile coach. Indeed, which yes, means I am. you're part of the hierarchy. Yes. And so I'm wondering if you could <laughs> tell the listeners a little bit about how that's different, some of the challenges you face, how that uh, makes being a coach a little more perhaps uh, different or difficult or both. Yeah, I, I know you've talked about it on your podcast multiple times the the consultant dynamic, and that's something that I'm I'm not really familiar with, but I found out a little bit through your podcast and through coming to conferences and meeting people who are consultants. Um, but the dynamic for an internal agile coach, I mean, you're, you're, you're coming to work with the people that are doing the work, you know, you're coming to, to work with the people who are on the teams. You, you aren't able to, you know, skip town like some of the consultants are, or, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you don't have necessarily an endpoint. So I think it, it, what makes part of that challenging is that you can't, you can't come in like a bull in a china shop. You have to come in and be subtle. But I think that that affords a lot of cool opportunities. I think that in my case, I've gotten to know people really, really well. And I think it, it speaks to some of that introspection, not only at the personal level, but the group level, that when you get to know people really well at the workplace, really cool stuff can happen. And I think that being an internal Agile coach affords a lot of those opportunities that perhaps being someone external wouldn't afford really the ability to invest the time in people because this is a a a long-term uh process it is so you're going to spend a lot of time with these people you're going to spend years with these people so you can spend the time it takes to to grow the relationships and then to do the coaching and you have those extra insights i think that's an, an interesting uh take on coaching because typically you go in you have a six-month engagement you don't have time for mm -hmm. all the personal stuff you got to deliver 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 and show you know why you're worth that high uh, consultant price tag and so that's that's an interesting uh divergence from a, a typical consulting path mm -hmm. it is I, I agree and when i think about it, just your description of coaching i think about the the sports metaphor of you know a coach in sports and how they're sort of sometimes a hired gun, right? To hi sure. They're hired to come in and turn a team around. And if they don't produce results within a certain amount of time, then they're, they're shown the door. Whereas in my role, I feel like I've almost been given one of those, you know, Mike Krzyzewski lifetime contracts in some ways where it's, I'm there to, to, to exist and help build relationships with people and have that kind of be at the forefront of what I do. And then throughout that relationship building, provide coaching along the way. As you work with these in, internal people, internal teams, internal stakeholders, all of these these different roles within within your company, what have you found to be the most difficult uh, aspect to to train, to coach, to teach? Where, where, where do people get stuck? I think people get stuck in a lot of ways, and, and some of this is what I talk about in my talk itself. It's I think, I think people get stuck learning new things. I think learning new things is a challenge for a lot of people, particularly at the company I work in. We've been successful for many, many years. Um, we started 25 years ago, I think, as a, as a kind of a two-man startup. We're now up to 2,000 people. We have a global right. reach. We have 15,000 customers. We have shown no sign of stagnant growth since I started at the company eight years ago. So I think for a lot of people, when they when they view agility as being a different paradigm shift, they, they question why. They question what the, in, what the incentive is for them since they've been part of a, a, a company that's, that's exceeded every expectation of it so far. It's people's ability to learn and people desire to learn. And to take that to a, a further step, even the fear of change, right? So the, certainly. What, what am I losing? What am I gaining? Are you busting down my fiefdom? How do I 
how do I add value? What's my purpose? What's my role? All those things start swimming around and, and I can imagine, you know, a, a consultant can walk in and say, well, this is how you're doing it. Right. And this is what we need to do. And this is what your CIO told me we're going to do. And as an internal coach, you have to see them every day. Yep. Uh, you have to get along with these people. It has to be a more uh, collaborative effort. It does. And that's not saying that external coaches aren't. Right. That's just saying that Certainly not. there's an extra expectation, I think, that uh, it's collaborative. It's it's um, You're all moving together. Yep. And because you're all up through the same org and the same chain, and that, that can probably bring some complications to it. It does. And, and, but at the end of the day, so many of them are people complications. And if you just get to know right. people and if you get to, to really understand what makes them tick... Um, and vice versa, if you're, if you're not only trying to figure out what makes them tick, but then also giving them a little bit of what makes you tick, I think that can go a long way towards getting everybody to march in the same direction. So continuous learning, this is another aspect of your talk that mm -hmm. uh, I know uh, came out and I think was pretty popular given from the feedback. So from your point of view, what can people do to make sure that they're continually learning, continually progressing, and, and getting better at what they're doing? I think it's all... I, I, Agile, the whole Agile world, whether it's your podcast, the people you have on your podcast, Don Gray's never-ending bookshelf, um, <laughs> <laughs> any, any of those things are like some ready-made kind of like served-to-you learning opportunities, right? right? Part of my talk delves with my own learning journey about how like uh, as humans, I think we typically just suck up knowledge when we're kids because that's all we can do. Um, but then as we sort of progress through school and through the education system, learning becomes more of a challenge, it becomes more of a job. As adults, I think so much of it is just in figuring out what you want to do with your life. Right. And 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 when you figure out what you want to do with your life, being able to correlate that to some specific learning activities, whether they're agile related or not. It's very good. Well, Jeremy, that's a great place for us to, to I think, stop. But I wanted to make sure that people had the opportunity to reach out, to get a hold of you, if there's anything else you have going on that you'd like to promote or how people can ask you questions about some of the things that you've talked about and brought forward today. Sure. I think the best way, Ryan, is to find me on Twitter at uh, Jeremy, J-E-R-E-M-Y, and then Willets, my last name, W-I-L-L-E-T-S. Find me there. I just shared, I shared my slide deck from the conference, so Great. you can find that there. And uh, if you want to reach out to me, do it through Twitter. All right, so we'll get all that linked up and we'll make sure people can reach out and ask you about uh, introspection and all these other activities. And really appreciate you carving out some time and, uh, and hopefully we see you again at a conference speaking and you continue down that path. Sure thing. Thanks again, Ryan. All right, take care. You know, I always enjoy getting to listen to new speakers, especially when they're friends. And I, I'm super excited for Jeremy and I hope he keeps talking. It was just great getting to sit down and talk to him about his first speaking adventure. I think he's going to have many more in the future. It's also part of why I'm so supportive and enthusiastic about Agile Dev East. They support new speakers. There's always a new voice. It's always something new and interesting to go and see. So I hope that uh, as all of you have been listening this past month to the Agile Dev East spots, you use that code AFH16, you get $200 off your entry, and you get out there and you check out uh, all the great things going on in Orlando this coming November. I would love to meet you. I hope you're out there and you're able to come to, to the the Business of Agile, Better, Faster, Cheaper, and the Half Day Scrum Workshop that I'm putting on. There's a ton of other great speakers, a lot of great topics, some new faces out there as well. And I think that uh, you'll have a great time if you're there. So again, that's a great way to support the podcast. I really appreciate everyone who's using that code to go out to Agile Dev East. I hope to see all of you there. And as always, have a great evening. Thanks for listening to Agile for Humans. Let's keep the conversation going. Drop us a question on Twitter at Agile for Humans or visit agileforhumans.com. <laughs>